Bagwan, one correction. I'm from Zimbabwe, not Kenya. <laughs> That's okay. From wherever you are, I'm glad to see a black man. To me, black is beautiful. <laughs> and I'm all for the black people, although they have not started coming to me. Perhaps they are so poor, so downtrodden, that they are involved in their own misery. But take my message to them, that I would like here as many black people as possible. going to ask uh, <laughs> how you can explain, you know, you, you, some, you seem to, some, to have uh, answers for almost everything. How do you explain your, the lack of followership uh, of uh, people with black skin, you know, in this community? I'm not talking of a, a black skin in Africa, but there must be some black in the United States. How do you explain you know, the lack of followership here in this community, people with skin like mine? You are asking me how I am going to explain how you, them? How, how do you explain the lack of followership? Bhagwan, he is asking why not so many blacks are here in this community? Yeah. <laughs> the world has been divided into the East and the West. Now it should be divided between the North and the South. The South has been completely denied, ignored. It has not been able to grow into intelligence. It has the same potential as the white people of the North. Perhaps the black man has more potential than the white man. One thing is certain, that black people and their intelligence has not been used for centuries, perhaps never. So it is absolutely raw, unused, ready to burst forth. They are not coming to me for the simple reason that you don't go to them that I and my teaching is difficult for them to understand. The poor people may turn Catholics, may turn communists, but they cannot become Rajnishis. Because the poor people have hopes with the Catholics, yes, after life, after death, he has hopes with communists in this life. Of course, it is a big bargain. But they are certainly impressed by those things 
What I am saying is just goes above their heads. For the simple reason, you cannot ask everybody why do you not understand Mozart's music. But what Mozart can do about it? You have to learn classical music, its delicacies. Only then you can understand Mozart. I am speaking in favor of luxury richness in all dimensions of life. Naturally, the poor, wherever they are, will not feel in tune with me. But in fact, I am the only person they should feel in tune. I can drag them out of their poverty. Just look at my communes around the world. We have hundreds of communes around the world and they are all living richly, joyously. We would like the same for you and for your country and for your people. But it is a very strange phenomenon that you tend to listen to those same people who are the cause of your poverty, your degradation, your slavery. In India, I had experienced it, that I am talking to people to make them free of all mental bondage, all spiritual slavery, but they are turning against me because they think their spiritual slavery is not a slavery, it is something holy, a divine heritage. It is very difficult. I can reach to people very easily who have known the taste of richness and have found frustration in it. Those who are educated and have found that all this education is worthless, it does not give you wisdom to live. It gives you only knowledgeability that can make you somehow to vegetate. The gap is big. Even in India, here you will see all white people are here. In India, it was the same. All white people, ten thousand sannyasins from all over the world was living with me. But the Hindus were trying to kill me. They made attempts to kill me. Before 10,000 white people, a Hindu stands up and throws a knife at me. That is their response. I can understand it. Because I am speaking against their tradition. And they are so burdened with tradition, they cannot imagine themselves free. Has some black man reached there? <laughs> today, today we had uh, somebody who, here with a gun. 
that one of the press person has come here with a gun. Hmm? T today, one of the press person have been reported to have come with a gun to see if somebody else had a better show than he did, then hmm. he was going to shoot you. That's great. Suit me before all these media people. I would not like to die in a dark, dismal room, <laughs> lying on a bed. Suit me. This is the right moment. I have done everything that I wanted to do. I have experienced everything that is possible to human consciousness. There is nothing to lose. But suit me this moment. Gather courage, don't be afraid. I will tell my guards not to prevent you. My guards are not to suit the person. Assassinate me because Jesus missed media at least. <laughs> Don't let me miss the media. I was going to ask uh, why. You said five, it's been five years since uh, you last read newspapers, last saw the television. How come you know about Ethiopia, if not from the newspapers and the TV? Ask the Ethiopians, go there, what I have to do today, and how can I answer it? Go to Ethiopia and ask those people why they have not come. That is their business, not mine. No, no, you, how, how come you know there is hunger and starvation in Ethiopia when you don't read the newspapers, when you don't watch television? Where do you get the information from? Just from your questions. That's enough for me. I answer your question. That's enough. I don't want to go into details. I have a vision of my own, a clarity. I am just like a mirror. You come before it and the mirror will reflect you. The mirror is not a photograph. The moment you are gone, the mirror is again empty. I am just an empty mirror. You ask the question, I will respond with my totality. But my response is pure. It is not the response of a scholar. It is not out of knowledgeability, information. It is simply the clear insight of an ordinary man. John Nagagang Tao World Press Institute, Kenya. Great. <laughs> I was thinking there is only one. Two. Two is too many. Bhagwan. You described um, prophets, Jesus, and other messiahs as liars. What makes you think that what you, uh, what you teach is the truth? I am not teaching anything. So there is no question about my teachings. Nobody can ask whether they are true or not. I am teaching only methods. I don't give you any dogma, any philosophy that you can discuss and argue and find out whether it is true or not. I give you only a method. Practice the method and what I am saying you will experience. Your experience will prove 
that what I am saying is truth. These people here are here because they have experienced something. They have left their countries, their families, they have left everything they had just to come to me and look at me. This is stupid. When you are asking a question, looking here and there is simply stupid. Just look at me. and listen what I am saying, because when you are moving this way and that way, you are not listening. listening. Perhaps you are thinking that it is nothing. I am listening. Then you must have understood what I have said. I have no teachings, I have only methodologies. I am a scientific person. Science has only experiments. I have only experiments. Those who are courageous enough, they go through the experiment. And if they find something there, it becomes their truth. It is not my truth. I don't emphasize to believe in me. Even the method has to be accepted only as hypothetical. This is very pleasant for me because I don't have any principles. Nobody can contradict me. Nobody can criticize me. Nobody can say that what I am saying is not true. To say that he will first has to go through the experiment, the meditation, the silence, the joy, the blessing, and he will know. And I have never come across a single person who has followed the path, has not reached. Existence is very compassionate. Bhagwan, another question. Um, the, the followers, uh, the, the Sanyanis, uh, you call them Sanyanis? Sanyasins. The Sanyasins love you so much, I've seen that. And you must be aware about uh, a community like this that lived in Johnstown, Guyana, who committed suicide some years back. Don't you think that if you ever told them to take a portion, they would do so? They love me, I love them. How can I help them commit suicide? The person, Reverend Jim Jones, was a Christian. And the whole responsibility of Jones Town's suicidal act Is the responsibility from Jesus to Pope the Polak. All Christians are responsible for it because they have been teaching that all that is beautiful is beyond death. Jesus was doing the same as Reverend Jim Jones. They belong to the same category. Jim Jones was only repeating Jesus. Jesus was saying, you all are going to be with me. And soon I will come back and take all of you into the glory of God. Two thousand years have passed. The guy has not been seen again. <laughs> Thank you.
Naval Eshan, National Public Radio, USA. Bhagwan, is there a reason for, is it planned um, that the leadership of the Rajneesh Foundations and organizations are all female? Is there a reason for that? Is it, is yes, it something deliberate? Yes, there is a reason. I love women. <laughs> and I want to give them all that in the whole history of men has been taken away from them. This is just a little compensation. All the women are running the whole circus of mine <laughs> and they are doing it beautifully. And there are other reasons also. A man is more head-oriented. He thinks far and against. It is really very difficult for a man to say a total yes or a total no. He is an split personality. Some part of him says yes, some part of him says no. The woman functions through her heart, which knows no division. If it says yes, it is total. And yes is beautiful only when it is total. If it says no, it is beautiful. Anything which is total has a beauty. Anything which is half, half, fifty-fifty is schizophrenic. So not only the women who are biologically in a feminine body are running the soul, but the men who are also there have become more feminine than they would have imagined ever. They have become more graceful, more loving. Their head is no more in the way. They have fallen deep into their heart. In fact, all my sannyasins are women. <laughs> 